Thanks for staying with us. Joining us on this segment is the National Coordinator Congress of University Academics, Dr. Niyi Sumonu. He's a senior lecturer, Department of Physics and Engineering, Physics, Obafemi Awolo University, Ilefe. He'll be speaking to us on how to revamp our education statement system and also, um, you know, we currently describe our educational system publicly as comatose. So we're going to be discussing on how to revamp this system and how to put an end to the ASU strike. It's, we are tired of talking about ASU strike and it mm. seems unending. So we want to now dig deep into what the solutions might be. Join, in the, join the conversation by calling us on 081-270-53687 or you can call us on 091-390-76948. Now, tweets, doctor, yeah. yes, we'll be taking your tweets too, please. <laughs> tweet at us, we'll take tweets from the previous and this segment right now. We are tired. And on behalf of all Nigerian students, the association, the National Association of All Nigerian Students, previous and current parents association of students, all of us were tired of ASU strike. And I think that um, we seem to be going around in circles. We've done this strike every time, over and over again. What do you think is the, what are we missing? Well, why can't we get, put an end permanently to this thing? Thank you very much, uh, viewers. Thank you very much, uh, my host. It's nice being here this morning. Yeah. Strike action, as you rightly put, has been has put up put us actually in a vicious cycle, and we've been on this for around forty years or more. Oh, wow. We have an agreement with the government. Government will emerge along the line. There will be threat of strike. The strike will be embarked upon. Then. That cycle will be terminated at a point. Mm -hmm. There's a resumption. Then you start all over again. So um, I want to, with profound respect, quote a, a statement created to Albert Einstein that when you do one thing over and over again and expecting a different result okay. is a form of insanity. Mm -hmm. So we must start thinking outside the box. Mm. We can take it to another level of thinking as if there's no box at all. Mm. And we don't have in short supply people who can actually solve problems in this country with respect to industrial actions in the universities. For example, we are now in the democratic dispensation. We can take advantage of democratic norms to actually stem the tide of strike action. One of it is to intervene at the end of the legislation when you intervene and you succeed eventually in getting legislations that will make government responsible, that will make it a problem if the government reneges on agreement, then you have a way out in that. You can also look at the intervention of industrial arbitration panel because that in discussions, in arbitration, then certain the certain the decisions can be handed down that will be binding on all parties involved. You can also take the long route, the long route of legal action. Mm. That legal action, if anybody violates, whether the government or the it's union, action. then it become a kind of offense or a contempt of the court. Mm. If that happens, then that can deepen our uh, democracy. So. There are a number of interventions beyond these three I've mentioned that we can bring in to stem this tide of incessant strike action. So the, the main issue um, that we're looking at, no matter how we call it revitalization, memorandum in 2009 that has not been you know, answered, IPPIS to UTAS, is the issue of money. Stop. The government is claiming that they do not have money. No matter how you go around, there is no money. There's no, there's no intention to even put in money. Okay. There's no plan to do something about providing money to ensure that these people have their needs. How do you go from there? Even if you take a legal action and they say, we don't have money to pay, who do you hold? I think, th thank you very much for that question. I think your question stemmed from the perspective of the government will have to make 100% provision. We can look at alternative sources of funding in the Thank university. You. Okay. 
the alternative sources of funding in the university can include endowment, okay. can include investments, contracts, can include research grants, can include a number of things that will have, that will be different from what government is putting on the table. Mm. Mm. It's actually very difficult to also believe that the government does not really have the money. They ask Nigerians to live or stay alive, but what they demonstrate doesn't show mm. that they Slages. also um, live by what so it is preached. Mm. So in that, um, in that kind of example that I just cited, what we will advocate in the Congress of University Academics will be that discussion, transparent discussion, Honest discussion should be brought on the table where all stakeholders, the stakeholders in this sense, will then be expanded beyond the government on one side, the unions on the other side. There are other stakeholders. There are parents, they are stakeholders. Students, who are stakeholders. There are also experts in university administrations. There are also administrators within the universities who have seen it who have learned, who have since made some mistakes, who have also, in the course of their administration, they've seen some loopholes in what will have made them perform better, but they have uh, some kind of impediment that didn't allow them to do as much as they wanted to do. So we we'll bring all these people on board, have honest discussion. Mm -hmm. And when you put that on the table, when you have honest discussion and you make it so transparent that Nigerians are also stakeholders because when you have progress in the universities, no nation can rise above its ivory towers. Mm. Yeah. When you have progress in the universities, it will certainly reflect in the society. It's a ripple effect. So when you bring all these people on board and you are transparent about the discussion, the era of having discussion and covering it up from Nigerians mm. should be a thing of That's the past. past. Ah. Nigerians Those are smart people. They can have information, process, inf once they have information rather, they process information and they can make informed decisions. decisions. And this transparency will bring what I will call a buy-in. Mm. Where you are transparent, you don't need to stress yourself too much as a mm -hmm. government. You have the buy-in of Nigerians. And if it is going to be a discussion of superior arguments, not majority, mm. when you mm. have superior arguments, something that will progress us, Nigerians will make decisions and will support those decisions that are made, that arise from such meetings. The, the so, key element of these negotiations that you have had, you continue to hammer on, which is sincerity at negotiations. I fear the impossibility of that, not just on the part of government, also on the part of ASO. You know, I fear that when we sit at a table, it's about interest and not mm. sincere people's interest. It's about That's ASO nice. winning this argument mm. as against government. That's so government, standard. when it's close to elections, just as they did before they came in in 2015, bent over to ASO, promised ASO that there will be a possible change. But recently they're saying, you cannot negotiate an impossibility with ASU, basing it on finances. ASU, on the other hand, has plenty of problems, but you know, new, uh, UTAS and IPPISB is the front of the, the highest of their issues that they are arguing about. And then, you know, and in, in one voice, voice they are saying infrastructure within schools, in the same vein, they are saying salaries and increment of salaries for professors and workers. And in between us, you have the Sanu quarrel about superiority. And how can we really sincerely focus on the sincere interest, which is, of course, the development of the nation in the development human cap of human capacity of the students that graduate from these schools? How can that be the front of it? What if law, what we fail, if we fail as a people to have honest conversation, very soon we ruin our university education. Hmm. Very we'll soon, it, our university education to... will collapse totally. Uh -huh. So we should see it as once the university education collapses, the nation may likely collapse. If we see it as that, we are at a point that we need to 
reinvent the wheel. We need a paradigm shift mm. from what we used to do. Mm -hmm. And one key thing that should come out is that honest conversation. We know that on both sides of the divide, mm -hmm. there are mm, issues. When yeah. you go I into a meeting with a mindset that you are going to meet your adversary, mm. you don't get anything out of such meeting. Mm. You don't get anything out of such meeting. The mm. government also should also be proactive. Mm -hmm. you don't wait till strikes are declared before you know sure. that yes, academics are poorly paid, are poorly remunerated. You don't wait till that time. The inflation and these salaries have stagnated for over 10 years mm -hmm. in the cost of the inflation, this inflation. The cost of living. So the cost of living. So we can also, with respect to legislation that I mentioned the other time, mm -hmm. you can have a legislation that will make it, that will tie the salaries or emolument to certain indices that will fluctuate in the system that will make the salary improve as those things are improving. Minimum wage income. No, 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 no. no. I mean, I'm, I'm advocating something beyond that. Mm. That is, for example, it's not been discussed through anyway. For example, you look at uh, cost of living. You mm. tie emoluments to cost of living. Mm. If last year or two years ago you paid 100,000 naira, for um, accommodation per mm -hmm. annum. Mm -hmm. And this year you are paying 200,000 naira and you still stay on one salary. Mm. So just for instance, that will still be discussed more fine-tuned so that we can come out with some okay. kind of informed decision. So the point I'm making is that if we don't turn back from coming onto the negotiation table with a mind of meeting your adversary, you don't come to the table with the mind of saying, okay, we're all stakeholders, equal stakeholders, mm. and we want progress mm. of this system, Situation. then we'll remain in this vicious circle. Mm. Wow. You know, sometimes I feel that we have over-talked. We oh. the, the conversations are unending. You know, you, you're talking yeah. about, let's sit down and make sure that the stakeholders no all come together. I just feel like we have talked any form of conversation. What we need right now is action. And you mentioned something about different ways that universities can raise funds or sort of be self, um, you know, um, they generate revenue for themselves and carry on. And um, that brings to mind for me TET Fund. This was money that's supposed to be put aside for the development of our universities, infrastructure, and we're not hearing anything. Almost all, the only thing we're hearing is sometimes the mismanagement of these funds, corruption. So who are we going to put in charge of these funds that we're talking about that? It's the same. Is it the government or is it ASU? Are these other stakeholders like parents, teachers, and as I say, who would now be in charge? Because it's like we have a Nigerian problem. When whatever we put our hands on, we sort of, you know, spoil it by mismanagement. I think the university administrators would do well trying to oversee this kind of fund, but they are not going to do it in isolation as far as I'm concerned. It's going to be done with respect to other critical stakeholders. And those critical stakeholders will have uh, an oversight and they will be looking at what is happening, how much is being realized, how much is being used for what and for what. And those funds were not just going to be solicited for out of the blues, mm. you have strategic plans. Where do you want to go from here to here? What are your strategic plans of moving your university from one point to the other point? What are, when you break it down, what are the things you need here, here, and here? So when you have that, university administrators are in the best position to deploy, to use this. But if you put the element of transparency, transparency has a way of Checking bad attitude. Don't As we already way. have that? Yes. I, I do but not we think so. find a way so. to circumvent it. Well, circumventing then, we should punish those who circumvent yes. any transparency plan so that start, it will serve as deterrent for others. Let me mm. throw in this quick question. Um, you mentioned the lack of trust. You mentioned the fact that we feel... Um, the leaders within ASU might feel there's hypocrisy in the government statements about lack of funds because 
if you're saying you don't have funds to pay us, but you are paying yourself, then really you don't prioritize us. And that might lead to what we see some people are calling grandstanding on mm -hmm. the side of ASU. Um, so is it possible to trust this set of leaders? They already have bad blood. There's a lot of history, you know, what they call waters under the bridge that we can't seem to forget between the, the leaders in ASU and the people that are negotiating. So they are coming into the meeting with guns blazing. Is it possible for us to resolve this issue with this current crop of negotiators? Um, actually, I wouldn't want to talk so much about uh, the union so that I, I'm not accused of uh, bias. Okay. Uh, Congress on University Academics is a different academic union. And our worldview, our perspective of how things should be done Resolve. is what I'm putting across to Nigerians. <clears throat> uh, the Congress of University Academic came up as a result of some kind of uh, differences within the existing union mm. and ways in which we believe things should be done, especially in a democratic system. So, but the point I will make here is that currently all the critical stakeholders, if we fail to be honest about our conversation, if we fail to go into, onto the table with all sense of, I mean, purpose, then we'll be doing more damage. No, but let me ask good. you a, point, a direct question. Do you believe that we should still be on strike? Do you believe that this strike is necessary at this point in time? <laughs> Personally, I do not think so. Mm. If the government does what needed to be done, now that we are where we are, you don't get into the water and start complaining of uh, yeah, uh, cold. cold. Now that we're where we are, what are the ways out? Mm -hmm. And the ways out are the suggestions I've just made. Mm -hmm. This, I mean, this current umpress mm. will hand at the table. I heard, Mar like I, I heard Miriam saying, we have talked too much and what have you. Yes, I agree with you partially. <laughs> yes, we've talked. There can't be too much discussion. Until but we also need action. Mm. We also need action on the part of the government. This wants to throw in do, the question. Do you think that one of the reasons we are not hitting any headway is the fact that uh, the leaders who are supposed to be making concrete plans in terms of supporting ASU to get back to school do not have a direct connect to the pains the students are feeling. Uh, do, they don't have children in this system of education. Mm. Not necessarily. Okay. Once they are in government, the shame will be on them. Mm -hmm. So no I, shame in this country. I, the shame will be on the, will be on the should government. Be. Should be, but we don't have shame in the country. It Eventually, like when it our histories are being written in this period, we we'll still... A truth in time, I agree with you. Yeah, because we, we remember some of our leaders and the fact that yeah. so when, when you were in government, your, your, your school was on strike. You. They said it, they, 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 they brought it up with some people that are trying to contest so it So right what did the legacy do for the people who suffered at the time? Exactly. So I'm talking oh. concrete. Leave okay. time first. Yeah. Time will give us story, you yep. know, for others not to but copy. The... But the damage has been done. Sure. My question is how do we avoid this damage from being done to innocent children who are supposed to be... It's already children. been done. It's done. It's already the done. The only thing is, the point we are now, all the critical stakeholders, I keep on saying that, should come to the table with sense Clean of purpose, mm -hmm. with honest mind, yeah. with the fact that there will be compromises on all ends. All? All ends. All ends. Yeah. Be is not to there will be compromises on all ends. As we would say that Otherwise, what we are doing today will come back to haunt us. Mm -hmm. Let me take Mariam's question. Yes. So, um, for me, it's the way forward. You know, we're talking about how, again, universities can generate revenue for itself. And I'm wondering about the cost of education in that regard. Could this be one of the reasons that maybe our universities are um, reluctant to look that way? Because it would mean... Um, university education is so expensive and that will be unpopular with Nigerians. The way I will come in in that respect will be to say that there should be an expanded discussion of all <laughs> stakeholders beyond, beyond these two, the unions on one side and the government. Mm. Those people I listed in the, the other time at that such meeting or meetings Everybody should put all the cards on the table. Face up. If introduction or tuition will be the way to go, 
to be crystal clear to everyone concerned. You know, I told you about transparency. Yes. Mm -hmm. Once you are transparent about it, yes, parents, students themselves. So, and the beautiful thing about transparency, with honesty, with truthfulness, is that you have a binding immediately. In fact, the suggestion can even come from those that will pay. Mm. Mm. But as it is now, we have not annexed all the um, all the resources we have, like so, the endowment, like the research grants. For example, the relationship between the universities and town, that is not being explored as such. Town in this sense, take Lagos Marshall. for example, you have companies, mm. yeah. you have financial institutions. Are they supporting any research in the financial department of our university? Have they been asked to? So these are the things we should, I mean, annex, explore. And see how far that takes us. My, in, my, this, in these negotiations, um, can we can a side of the divide for now? Let's say the ASU as against government sell this vision of the possibility because you so as you mentioned, we go to the to the table as as adversaries rather than you know um, as, as, as stakeholders. Can we? Can somebody come and say at this point, this is the white uh, flag and the olive uh, branch and all of that. This is the future. This is the possibility of the future we are talking about here, and this is all about you know giving an holistic balance to everybody, particularly the priority on students, to the graduates, and how you will build a, a nation that will be a nation of our dream, rather than come in angry at you know past um, negotiations, the lack of results and all of that. And then if it's not the us doing that, can the government on the other hand, because the Minister for State for Labour, his attitude at this issue was annoying and provoking on Twitter. Can we have somebody see the picture? And can people on the Congress, uh, what's it, group? Congress of University Academics. Academics. Can you as um, um, unbiased middlemen reach out to either side? And you know, make them see this picture. So this is this is this line of argument that they'll bring in. We're actually reaching so out to the government with that, in that respect. Second, before you answer that question, let's take Benjamin from Oyo. Good morning. Good morning, Benjamin. Welcome morning. to the show. You are welcome over there. there um, this kind of um, discussion we are making, this, I think, is a very brilliant one. And I think um, this is not the first time there will be a strike. Right? And with all this, what we are envisaging, according to uh, your guest there, that cannot be a fundamental uh, solution to this kind of problem. What I would rather suggest, instead of them pursuing how the money will come out, they should rather pursue maybe uh, this National Assembly to make a law that will ban every public office order from sending their children to school in abroad. That's the only solution, I think. Because whatever you do now, another government will still come mm. and they can rubbish what you have done. Sure. But when their children are facing the same thing our children are facing, when it's there is a law that bans them from sending their children, uh, apart from even all the... Someone tried to push it. Someone tried to push that law, but it was stepped down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't. You can't until you get a majority. You cannot create that kind of law. Sir, you were going to answer that question. We're almost out of so, time. Whether we like it or not, we are trying to reach out to the government. We reach out to the government rightly. The other union don't see us as existing, so um, our views do not matter. Yeah. But we reach out to the government with respect to honouring. Whenever you have agreement, honor the agreement. Once you do that, you bring, you reduce a, a, by a high margin the trust deficit that you have. Mm. And when you are at a table, you have honest discussions, these discussions are transparent, and you reach agreement based on that, you should fulfill everything that you. But, you, but you what you, if, honestly, now government finds it impossible to honor that agreement they reached? 
Remember that this agreement is several years old. Before the, the one in the past, you mean? Yes. yes. They are already they are discussing new ones. Oh, hey, they left the 2009. No, 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 not that they left it. Uh, they, with the proviso that they had this problem of implementing it and whatever you, the that the resources that we had the other time is not as Finished. as much as we have now mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So they are trying to have some kind of modifications mm -hmm. on what we had in 2009, okay. this year. <sighs> what I'm saying is that that kind of discussion must be honest and must be transparent. Mm -hmm. And once you reach agreement based on that, the government should do, will do well by honoring that agreement in totality. All right, do we have any messages? Um, one of the things that I've heard you say over and over and over again, honesty, transparency, bringing the stakeholders together, mm -hmm. everybody having very open conversation. Yep. And I don't think that anybody, any of the negotiating parties now would say any of what you said is wrong. Um, so I'm, I'm really hoping that we can have that honest conversation between um, the government as well as um, the ASU uh, involving students and the parents. That is a conversation mm. I'm going to The earlier we do that, the better. It's already the Elvis. Says, your guest left out tuition fees. University education can't be delivered on the cheap. I think I mentioned well, it. You mentioned it. Let me just finish the question. Okay. We're not in the 70s when we have less than 50,000 federal universities. University education used to be free in the UK, but non tuition fee is minimum of £9,250 per annum. I brought the question because of yeah. the increasing number of students and the lesser number of infrastructure to cater to. Yeah. How, a size government now, beyond all, of the, all that you mentioned, how can we look at, we've always used it, but how are we looking at you know, increasing it? Donations where you have um, foundations and grants and, li and like that, you know, somebody is responsible for a theater within the university, somebody is investing for certain other infrastructure and getting grants. How, why are we not having those things anymore? The vice chancellors, <laughs> the administrators of the universities have to roll up their, they have to roll up their sleeves. And think work. creatively, like governors of their own states. Yes, the vice really president is the governor of the sleeves. university. You know, universities uh, have alum alumni base. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And that's what they did in um, university teaching hospital. In Ibadan. In fact, I was about mentioning, very but I was just afraid of whether that was totally been out of $1 million. Time, yes, but totally out of time. And we do have opportunities like this. People will just get more creative um, in resolving the problems that they are facing. Um, we do, you know, today is Monday. We have who wants to be a billionaire. I want to be sure that we have that ready. Okay. All right. So Thanks. we can have more questions then. We have more time today. I just want to know, do you understand this Utah's IPPIS conversation? Ah, is it too you, long? Maria. Is there a short answer thank for you. it? Can you break it down? Why can't you? Why is Utah's students... better than IPPIS? And why can they not compromise on it? You know. Uh, I would like to say the perspective of uh, the Congress of University Academics. Okay. And I would like okay. to speak generally. Software. Mm -hmm. okay. Software, there is no software that is foolproof. Mm. Number one. There's no software that will not be operated by humans. Softwares are meant once they are, um, once they are made or developed. That's the word. Once they are developed, they can, they can be upgraded with time. That's mm -hmm. why you have Microsoft in 1998, yeah. not the from one what you are you using now, now speaking yeah. generally. Yeah. Okay. So because of the fact that softwares are going to be used by humans, mm -hmm. There are only two types of humans, the good and the bad. <laughs> so softwares that need improvement find itself in the hand of a good guy. Mm. It gets better. You improve on it. Mm -hmm. IPPI falls in this category. Wow. It has issues. Yeah. It has issues, no doubt about that. But it has potential. But when you have honest conversation about it, it can be improved upon. Okay. Software, any software, good also, finds its way into the hands of a bad guy. Think of the financial institutions they use software. <laughs> and we've had in the news people circumventing the software okay. to enrich themselves, you know, to steal. So if that software finds itself in the hand of a bad guy, you can use it to circumvent the system, to cheat the system, which the, 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 the officer is facing the music now is in the court of law. 
Yes. We wait until there's a pronouncement on that. Okay. So what I'm saying in essence is it's not the software that is the problem, so to say. Mm. But are you saying that applies to both Utahs and IBPIS? And this software whatsoever. Okay. But the thing is, the challenges, can they be identified? Once they're identified, can they be incorporated into the improvement of the software? If the answer is yes, why do we... So you're saying that we can compromise on that? On the Utah's IPPIS? I think so. All right. So, um, I, there's a question I've ticked here since when you spoke about legal action. That's because every agreement that is made by any government is subject to the implementation desire of the government that is on ground, except there's a legal action and it is being made a law or the Supreme Court says this. Why, have, why are we not saying, is it what? I don't know. I'm not a legal, you know, Nima yeah, is in that Nima's category. But could, could ASU take the government to court for not fulfilling their arrangement and have a legal battle take place to the point of Supreme Court? And there's a judgment saying, government implement, and then we are good. Why not? The only thing we will suspect here is that uh, the legal process in this country takes awful long time. Mm, well, but and the children will be at home waiting. Eventually, that could save us long term stress. Yes, because if they don't need to be at home. You can once you know that there's a legal action, you can be working knowing that at the end of the day that you could have save a, us long term stress. Yes. And it will break this yoke of this vicious cycle. Also, another option so that we have a legal back into whatever agreement we have. Thank you so much for your time. It was great having you on yes, the sir. show. It's my pleasure. Thank you for being diplomatic to, you know, you tried, <laughs> but you, you, you hammered on the real issues. We need mm. honesty at the helms of affairs on the negotiation of the ASU strike, and we cannot wait for it to be called off. Thank you, ladies, for today. That's all we can take on the show this Monday. See you all tomorrow. Bye.